Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Friday. It's not really Coffee with Job. Uh, it's Kiwi Fruit with Job. I, I love these golden kiwi fruits. This is kind of like a late breakfast for me. Well, we are coming to look again at the witness when Job is calling Jesus as his witness. Uh, we're in Job chapter 16 and we read it before. Even now my witness is in heaven, my advocate is on high, my intercessor is my friend as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. I love this so much. Uh, by the way, we're recording this a slightly different way today. I'm recording it on my laptop in the uh, in in my study at home. It's very hot outside and very muggy. Can I just say something about how we comfort people? Because what we're seeing here is what Job needs. He really needs this witness. He really needs Jesus. But he's got friends. You know what they do? They say to him things like, um, it's your fault. God is judging you. They, they, they make a judgment about the situation, about why it's happening. That is not helpful. They also say things like, you know, things could be worse. It's not the end of the world. You know, I, and again, that's not really helpful. What you say may be logically true, it's not the end of the world. So one of you may be going through a bit of suffering just now, and it may not be that massive, but let's just say you have a massive headache. It's not really much help to you if someone comes and says, excuse me, well, at least you've not, you know, had your leg blown off. Or you may have lost your job. You, you, you may be suffering from a really um, discouraging situation at work, or you've lost your job and someone comes and says, well, at least you're not... Uh, being persecuted. It's really not much help. So I think that what Job does here, uh, it shows us what's needed. People need to bring Christ. Now, I think if we look back over this whole chapter, and this is the reason I wanted to do this, this these verses again, is we find that Job's experience often reflects the experience of Christ. He had done no violence. So for example, chapter 16, verse 17, my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. Well, that is Christ. He sinks in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters. The floods engulf me. Christ has gone through all that. Christ was lonely. The flight into Egypt. Birds of the air uh, have nests and foxes have lairs, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Christ in Gethsemane. Christ on the cross. Christ loved his neighbour, but his neighbour did not love him. Christ was condemned by the establishment. Christ was an embarrassment to his family, betrayed by his friends, and the crowds wanted him dead. Mark 3.14 says this. You know, Jesus wasn't some kind of stoical figure. It says that he appointed 12, designating them apostles, that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. He wanted them to be with him. And at the end, there was no one with him. And that's what Job is, is feeling like. I think physically, Christ experiences the worst of pain. Emotionally, being in anguish, Luke twenty two forty four. he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. The agony that Christ went through. And spiritually, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, how does that tie in with Job? Well, I think it ties in with Job in this way, that Christ's experience and Job's experience are to some degrees our experience. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 10 to 11. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life might be revealed in our body. Do you know what? The Christian life is one of crosses and one of losses. We must go through many hardship, Act 14.22, to enter the kingdom of God. The cross has been the way, says Calvin, to victory and death the way to life. Bonhoeffer, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. 1 Peter 4.12, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed 
when his glory is revealed. So what's that? The Christian life's one of suffering and carrying a cross? How does that work? Well, this is how it works. It's brilliant. My intercessor is my friend. He is my advocate. He is my redeemer. In this world of beauty marred by ugliness, he's the one who brings healing and hope. That actually is the whole message of Job. And that's why I've come back to these verses. My intercessor is my friend. I got a friend. And he's the son of God. And he's the word. And he's the one who's created. And he's the one who died for me. And he's the one who sustains. And he's the one who gives his spirit. If you are a Christian, that's what you've got. And if you're not a Christian, you've got nothing in comparison with that. So let me leave you with that. We'll probably be back to normal on the balcony on Monday. Uh, we've got Romans again on Sunday, the same time, 11 o'clock on Sunday, and of course on YouTube. But God bless you and have a great weekend. Bye.